Okay guys, it's uh, week three of coronavirus. Sunday, March 1st to 2020. So the coronavirus crash is a week and a half in. Um, we just finished the uh, second weekend with it. Uh, I did a video um, to show you where I got in on the crash with swing trading, was able to catch, you know, exit some um, some call trades, some bullish trade. Um, the flipped course went into uh, put trades uh, with the options and uh, you saw some uh, some of the profits from that so what we're having uh, what's happening now is is the weekend uh, to a week and a half in uh, the the crash may be getting old so there's a chance it may be reversing so we'll start with going into uh, uh, the news so Yahoo Finance uh, just to screen and see uh, you can see this was the last uh, trade uh, day with the Dow, Nasdaq, S&P all down. Uh, I got I got out on a lot of the trades. I still held on to some. Let's see what's happening. Gold is down. Oil is down. Uh, Russell 2000 is the smaller companies. They're down, and uh, silver's down. So that that was the pattern we saw last time. Now, uh, since it's Sunday in here, it's already Monday over in Europe and um, Japan. And you can see the FTSE here uh, is the European uh, stock market. It's down. So that tells us, hey, maybe the uh, there's still some uh, a downtrend for the U.S. markets when it opens. But take a look at the Nikkei. This is the Japanese market. It went up. So now there's maybe a surprise uh, in store. And actually, uh, I don't. We don't have the futures here, but I think futures uh, were down initially, and the futures is going to give us a hint of where the opening uh, prices are all going to be when the market opens on Monday morning. So, um, so here, uh, what to know? A week ahead, V-shaped recovery. That means at the end of the the bounce, and it bounces up quickly. We call it a V-shape. Uh, they're saying it's unrealistic here. And you can read that to see why, but I'm just going to scroll through here. Uh, coronavirus uh, driven sell off, something. Um, so Dow Jones futures jump uh, in wild reversal. So, yeah, even though there are new cases uh, in the U.S., uh, two, new, two deaths so far in the U.S., um, but the futures are jumping. See another another article. U.S. futures uh, rise after initial drop. So there might be a surprise opening that's higher. Uh, doesn't mean it's going to stay high, uh, but we have to be prepared for both uh, sides of the market of going up and going down. So with that in mind, let's go on and go into stock charts here. That's where we're going to look for our trade signals for this coming week. Um, I'm going to go into my crystal ball list here this is my crystal ball and uh, it's my sectors list and we're gonna screen the sectors for options to play for this week um, and I'm gonna be looking for up and down plays I would do some technical analysis and some uh, pattern uh, analysis in this video okay uh, what we're gonna go uh, is gonna let's look at all the pay all the plays so far and I will show you what I have um, going into this week uh, of course, I had one loss here. This was uh, uh, gold miners. I thought gold would go up with a crash, but actually it went opposite. So I lost on this one. I bought one uh, a, a call, 115, but, but I sold it, got out of it uh, at 30 cents only. So big loss, but then a reverse course here, put a put on it. So I still have that in play. In case this fall continues, uh, it might, I might turn that into a profit. I'll we'll move on. So no technical analysis on these trades. Uh, well, I talked about these already on another visual, video. Um, okay, gold miners, hold on. Gold miners is gonna follow uh, gold, and uh, so yeah, it crashed. I didn't get, I didn't play this one, but this is a momentum trade, just because uh, it's not a swing trade. Uh, volume went up, price dropped. I jumped in with a put, a put for a, a, a bearish play. And so we're in, I'm still in this one, I'm coming into this week. Uh, we'll see, financials, XLF, financials took a big hit. 
I did uh, jump in with a swing trade here, caught one here, one, two, profitable trade. I'm still in on this one, on the third one coming in. Again, I'm not going to go over those trades in details. I did it in, in a different video already. Um, Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong took a big hit with China. Uh, so I had two two plays here. One here and one here. The outputs. Oh, three, three plays. Uh, so three profitable trades here. I'm still in on this, but you can see on the last day it had a, a, a positive um, uh, bounce. So if you look at here, there's a little bit positive divergence. I'm not sure this one is going to end up with a profit here. I'm still in on it. We'll, we'll see. And go on. Um, these are the, okay, another uh, trade here uh, that I profited last uh, week. I still have, uh, uh, I got in at 104, sold at 174, went in here at 84. Um, I added another put. Uh, and I got that because Mexico reported its own first coronavirus case, so it may be some there may be some panic, it may go down some more. But you can see the last day it actually bounced up, but volumes are negative, so there's a chance that these puts will put in some more profit. Uh, let's go down here. This is China, of course. China got hit by Corona right here. I should actually put that in. Uh, in the chart right corona right here at the end of the year in December they first announced it and you can see it crashed I got a, I got a profitable trade here doubled my money almost and then I'm still in on this one and I put another one here but also on the last day you can see it was positive positive volume positive divergence China I I think it's unlikely that it's gonna market's gonna go up. I think it's gonna go down. I think people are just positive that one day because uh, their new case reports are um, are decreasing. But the market the markets took a big hit. The businesses took a big hit. I don't think it's gonna go up. It had a one day rise. I think it's gonna drop again. But we'll see if it rises again. If uh, if it's positive volume again for another day, uh, this positive divergence continues. I'm I'm gonna get out of it. But I had one profit already, so there's room for uh, some losses there. And next is developed markets, uh, as opposed to emerging markets. Uh, I took a big dip, um, but I had one good trade, two, three, three profit or trade. I'm still in it for the fourth one, but uh, the last day was a um, was a positive. I'm not sure it can turn around quickly. Uh, we'll see. Okay. And then oil, uh, I got in on this one on the last day, but again, it bumped up again on Friday. So this is at a loss, uh, but you can see the futures uh, for oil, I think was down. So uh, this may come back and at least break even or uh, go into profit. And then US dollar, uh, I think US dollar actually took a, took a, is taking a hit right now because I, I was just looking at the foreign exchanges, US dollar was kind of crashing. So this, crash might actually go down more but I'm not even in this trade um, so now uh, we're gonna look for new trades uh, so technical analysis so let's go to, over this again we won't use ATR uh, I should re uh, re uh, I should remove that we will use RSI and volume to determine low um, short-term entries and exits this is the price chart and we use it to look for uh, patterns uh, mainly uh, bullish patterns would be a rising W now this is the rising W so this was very bullish uh, so down up down up um, and then we look for a uh, f um, bearish uh, signal which is a, a falling M so here's an example of a falling M up down up down and you can see the uh, the high here and the high here the high second high is lower than the first high the uh, low here is uh, second low here is higher than the first low so this was a down market so I would have caught this trade here to come down uh, to here stochastics we will use uh, as this is the best way to see uh, uh, check the trend so you always want to catch the bottom of the trend here below the 20 line and then you want to ride up to above the 80 line so you would have caught this one to run up to here that means you catch a trade here go up to here 
and if you play reverse you can actually catch it here and run down here so you would have caught it here with a put come down here right and then here you can you could have caught it here and run up here uh, catch it here run up here uh, it's trickier to to um, buy this one and run up here that's more of a momentum tray you need uh, the, the signals are not as easy so a lot of times I don't catch the second uh, uh, second win here I just catch it from here to here but if you look at this so we want to start putting in tops and bottoms so you can see a top with the green line the last bottom we saw was a red line so this to me is still a rising W uh, down up down so if this goes up with the uh, uh, it would be a, a, a bullish play US dollar US dollar unless this falls breaks through the floor here so for now in case it is bullish tomorrow this is a we can buy calls we keep an eye on this one uh, when the RSI 3 goes down to here these these are the entry uh, entry points there for bullish play so I'll put that there so when it's here it's loading up it's getting ready I put a dot in front of it that moves it to the front of the chart for me to uh, to screen through quickly for quick plays in the morning okay we'll move on this is emerging markets bonds so it's bonds it's not emerging markets again this is bullish uh, with a pullback it didn't uh, break through the last um, actually let me put in the tops and bottoms so you can see so I would use RSI 3 here for tops and bottoms the last top is the top here that where it's in the green the bottoms will be where it's red here so with that we draw in the tops and the bottoms the last bottom was here ah the last bottom is here so I use this as the bottom the last green is here but look actually this now fell through the last bottom so this is not anymore a uh, uptrend this is now a downtrend I'm gonna mark it here to remind me so now this is the leading ed edge of a downtrend I'm not gonna play I usually don't play the leading edge I call the leading edge the bleeding edge that's where it reverses on you quickly um, and you lose a lot of money so I would remove this this is no longer a play in my books no more dot there so because uh, it's the leading edge I'm gonna wait for this to fall down bounce back up to the next top and then I will, I will catch that one down okay so right now move on to page two of this crystal ball uh, this is not a chart this is this is an indicator for me a ratio between uh, the spy S&P and and bonds uh, uh, treasury bonds TLT is treasury bond so I use this as a gauge to see what's stronger uh, this is crashing so that tells me the spy is weaker than the bonds so stocks are weaker than bonds at this moment because of this big crash but you can't trade this this is just a ratio spy to TLT I use that uh, and it tells me where the money's flowing the, right now money is actually flowing into bonds not stocks so now we'll keep that in mind as we go on so here's the spy S&P dropping like crazy this is now a downtrend of course it broke through the floors if you want to practice putting in the tops and bottoms the last top is here which is here let's move that guy up yeah come on now a little delay here and then the last bottom is here which correlates to here and as you can see the current trend broke through the last floor the last bottom so now this is a downtrend it broke the uptrend that was here so I put this in here to remind me okay this is a downtrend so I, that tells me don't trade upwards okay this is down never go against the trend the trend is your friend the friend the trend is down now so for this stock I would uh, or ETF I would only trade down I don't go against the trend uh, be friends with the trend you will be uh, rewarded okay 
So this, this is not a play for me. This is a bleeding edge. I'm not going to catch it unless it bounces back up into uh, the ceiling here, the resistance, and it falls back down. I would catch that one. That would make it a falling M pattern. Right now, it's not a pattern. It's not a tradable pattern. So move on. And you're going to see most of the most of the charts are going to look like that. So we can do it real quick. A few more. So you can see again for practice. This is the last top. Right, put that up there. This is the last bottom. Put that there. Again, this crash through the bottom. Negative trend. I would not trade it going up at this point. Uh huh. IWM, same thing. I don't know. We ought to waste your time doing that, but this is the same. But I did catch this momentum trade here. Look at that. Nice trade. Got in at 101. I mean, 104 got out at 296. Uh, double my money. Uh, okay, this is the NASDAQ. Again, same thing. I don't think, but I, I caught this one uh, going in. So I don't have a trade in here at this point. But same thing, I'm not going to. Maybe uh, I, won't, I won't waste your time putting that thing, but I'll just put a. There. That is to remind me, don't trade up on this one. Next is semiconductors. Uh, again, broke through, uh, broke through the bottom, the last bottom here. So this is now negative. I actually was in, this was on an uptrend, so I got a call going into this crash right here. Right when it crashed, I saw these big volumes of red. I got out, lost thirty bucks or so, but it avoided me from losing a lot. So again, I'll just put this arrow here to tell me. And I think you know how I got this arrow already. Oop, not that one. There. Tell me not to trade a bullish trade on that one. This one, again, same thing. It broke through this floor. I got a you know, I got out of this one with a little loss here. I lost uh I sold at 80. Um, I lost 30 bucks. I got in at 110. Sold at 80. When I saw these things, I put in a red box here for a uh, negative divergence. Boom. Got out. But I caught it coming down. Turned it right around to a profit. T doubled my money. Got in 140. Got out 290. Uh, I'm not in this trade right now, but I'm not going to play it right now. It's bleeding edge. So far, I don't have them in place. Because uh, it might reverse. So I have no idea. If it's gonna reverse or not. Again, this is gonna be the same thing. I don't think we need to uh, uh, we'll waste your time putting a signal, but no play. Okay. This again broke through the bottom. It's, it's bleeding edge here, no play. So I'm not gonna mark it. This one again broke through the bottom here. Psh, broke through this bottom. I caught I caught it going down, got out before it bounced up on the last day here big volume going up so this may actually rebound tomorrow yeah, technology and you know American technology is hot uh, there's a chance it can if uh, stocks open positive uh, the Japanese market ended up positive there's a chance this may go up but it's a falling trend right now I'm not gonna buy a bull a bullish play on this one and then it's gonna reverse on me I'll lose money so no play okay uh, that's only one page guys this is page two again I caught this one coming down but again it's too negative and I don't think it's gonna bounce up right away and it may be too far-fetched to play again so uh, no play again this one broke through <laughs> this is a little confusing let me just at least clean this one up um, okay so we got the top the last top is here so put this down here the last bottom is here Again, it broke through the bottom. So this was already a negative play here. I'm just going to reconfirm that. It's a downtrend. So don't buy, don't buy any bull. bullish play on that one. And same thing here. So uh, I don't think that, I don't think there's going to be a lot of plays. Uh, that's, uh, that's easy tomorrow. I'm going to put this one up here. The last bottom was here. Crash through. Um, it's trying to bounce back up, but no easy play, guys. I think this uh, might be the end of this video because they're all going to look like that. Uh, um, 
Yeah, I mean, cut two coming down. But no play. This is a uh, bleeding edge, bleeding edge, bleeding edge. Uh, money flow, precious metals. Oh, so this is another index uh, ratio I use gold versus spy. So this is gold versus stocks. And if you can see, gold versus stocks is shooting up like this. That means stocks is crashing and gold is uh, 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 more valuable. Money is flowing into gold, precious metal. Uh, versus stocks so we don't trade it but uh, so I'll keep that in mind stocks are weaker than gold at this time and then we go on and move there but uh, we, I explained this one in the last uh, video uh, it was a gold rally but it's got stuck I actually got out of this one before it crashed so gold is actually now crashing with stocks but stocks is crashing more than gold they're both crashing but stocks is crashing harder uh, because this ratio is uh is higher uh the go to stocks ratio okay well keep that in mind but i don't think it's gonna be play uh well this is bull actually i take that back this is a rising w and if this is down if this low if this is the low it's actually higher than this one this is a rising w so this may actually be a bullish play so we'll keep an eye out and go tomorrow uh it's ready in the zone to buy if there's a high volume uh, going in and price moves up, we may actually buy a call on this one. And then, so I put a dot here, move it to the front of the uh, list for me. Same thing, no, not same thing. Silver is crashing out. I, I got two losses here already on silver. Uh, I'm, uh, and then now it's a bleeding edge, it's just crashing. So I'm not gonna play this one. Leave that alone. This is just crashing out. This is Meadows mining. So Meadows is, uh, you know, silver and gold, but uh, it's a mining company and they're very sensitive uh, to the market. So uh, they're high risk and it crashed. Uh, so there's no play here. We got a bunch of trades in here, but we're out. We're out of everything. So uh, I wouldn't play that this week until things stabilized again uh staples so we're out of the uh, gold and silver uh, now staples are usually the safe buys when um, when the market starts getting kind of skittish but you can see this crash along with uh with equity stocks uh, i got a piece of it here a piece of the profit and it dropped some more but this is now bleeding edge again i'm not going to play it home builders same thing crashed out um, uh, cut a piece of the uh, profit here but uh, not not a play this week healthcare got a bunch of play on its way down but this is now bleeding edge again it may try to bounce back up I'm not sure how much it would bounce uh, but I wouldn't say it's a play for this week not an easy play this one is uh, pharmaceuticals I haven't traded this one because there's a huge gap between the, the ask and the sell price. Uh, so uh, I don't think it's a play also. It's a, like a falling knife right now. Biotech. Uh, this one was a triple top pattern that crashed. We uh, we got some profit. This was in the other video. Um, but uh, it, it may bounce back up, but then this is now a clear downtrend. Uh, with the uptrend volume it's gonna be a little confusing to play this uh, I wouldn't play it uh, I would wait in, until this goes back up so wait for this to go back up and see where the next top is if the next top is lower than this top here then that is a continuation of a negative trend and I would buy a put as it comes back down uh, but we'll see uh, not a play at this point uh, well, this one was uh, utilities. Uh, utilities are usually safe too. Uh, it's what uh, people go to when they, they get skittish. But you can, as you can see, just like the staples, it, utilities crashed with it. Uh, I was playing uptrend here, caught a couple, and then I got out right before the crash. I saw the uh, divergence changes here. And you can see, gosh, using this system, you can get pretty near the top and get out before it crashes. And then uh, I cut the momentum uh, coming down, got up trade and got out of it. Uh, but I don't think that's a play this week. It's 
too uh, too risky. Again, this one uh, risky because uh, the the fall is too extended already. I don't want to get in and then it reverses on me. Same thing here. I crashed through but caught a piece of it. Same thing here. This is crashing through. This is uh, how you jump bonds, which which I mean you, we call it bonds, but uh, on observation it moves just like stocks. And so when stocks crash, just crash with it. But again, same reason as not playing stocks. I'm not going to play this because it's a leading edge falling. Um, now bonds. Uh, take a look at bonds here. Uh, this is the the bond yield. It's not the bonds that you can buy. It's the yield of the bond, which is opposite of uh, the bond value. Uh, goes down as cash flows into bonds. Okay, so. It's not going down as it is going up. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so, huh? If it's going up, that means cash goes down. The yield goes down as cash goes into bonds. So it's going up. So, uh, so cash is not going to bonds. Is that was? Yeah, I'm kind of confused myself now. Uh, but let's just look at the. Uh, uh, the other indicator. So this is my uh, other ratio I use: uh, bonds, uh, treasury bonds versus the SPY, this S and P. So this tells me if if bonds are strong relative to um, stocks. And you can't trade it, but it's it's to set my mind, so I can uh, take a look at the bonds uh, 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 ETFs next. So you can see is skyrocketing so bonds are a lot stronger than stocks at this point so keep that in mind go into next few so here bonds are skyrocketing where well, I got two trades in the bonds treasury bonds TLT but right now this is also the leading edge it can drop anytime I'm not gonna say it's a play I'm gonna just wait and watch it okay uh, municipal bonds it has a large gap on the option, so I haven't I haven't been playing it, but it, it kind of shows you the the same. It moves along the same trend with the uh, treasury bonds. So, but it's not it's not a play now. Uh, just unless this thing falls down, right? It falls down. You wait for this, or I just fall down to here, and if that low is higher than this low, then it's a uh, 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 it's an entry uh, point to go back up. Um, but it's not quite there yet. I'm gonna wait a few more days for it to hit that. Then maybe it may be a buy, but not now. Okay. Uh, Canada. Okay, big crash here. I caught one, but it's not. It's not a play for the same reason as before. And uh, Euro, Europe. Big crash out with Corona. Uh, I got one, two, three trades in here, but now it's not gonna be a play. I'm just gonna wait out and see which way it goes next. Um, real estate also big crash out I didn't even play it at this point I tried to buy a, I was uh, trying to buy a uh, a bullish play here which would have done well but it never bought so I just uh, I never got back in emerging markets versus uh, US dollar as another ratio I have for emerging market versus the US dollar to see where the money is uh, uh, where it's better to invest emerging markets uh, markets outside of the US and then yeah, uh, the strength of the US dollar you can see emerging market is crashing relative to the United States uh, US dollar so keep that in mind as we look at the emerging markets here uh, oh another ratio emerging market versus the US stocks uh, oh actually because the US stocks are crashing so much maybe the uh, actually emerging market uh, is uh, stronger than the stocks the last uh, during the last week, so keep that in mind. And uh, it says you know, <coughs> emerging markets here, which include China. So you can see from uh, the New Year's here, uh, coronavirus, uh, end of December here, it crashed, and I got three plays in there, uh, did pretty well, but uh, it's not a play now. Uh, waiting for the, it to swing up. But it's it may be still falling, and emerging markets bonds also crashing. It crashed through this floor here, so it's not a play. If it turned around uh, before the floor, then it's still bullish play. But I've already put this arrow here to say it's negative trend. 
And, uh, oh, what's this? Eh, we don't need this one. Let's toss it. It wasn't too useful. Okay, uh, this one has no option, but it's just telling me commodities are crashing. No trade, but just, uh, you know, oil is a commodity. So are farming products. Um, but we able to catch oil on its way down, crashing. This crash right here, uh, this was what, uh, guess what this corresponded to. This was when Soleimani was killed by, uh, uh, by the U.S. Army. Uh, as you can see, when he was there threatening the Straits of uh, Hormuz, uh, boy uh, uh, attacking Iran's uh, oil fields he was causing oil to get more and more uh, expensive once they got rid of him or uh, the price of oil tanked so I think us taking our solid money brought a lot more stability to the price of oil and we're reaping rewards of it at the gas tank so here it is uh, it crashed again during coronavirus um, yeah, it looks like, you know, this, this looks like it was a big profit, but you can see I got in at 75, only closed with $10. The gap was just too large. So that's why I don't like to trade on, uh, uh options that has uh, large gaps. Sometimes I just put large gap and I just put it there for my crystal ball to know the directions of the markets, but I don't trade it. So this one sometimes is not worth trading. And then... So this one's more worth trading, I think, oil and F. But no trade here, it's just crashing. I, you know, we need to swing, I do swing trading. So when it's, it's falling straight like that, there's no trade, there's no play. I need to swing like this and then swing like this. This is when I get in. So again, this oil, it may swing up, but it's it's gonna, it's leading edge, bleeding edge. I'm not gonna play that. And natural gas. Same thing, negative trend, and no, no play yet. Uh, and then it says oil services, auto services related to oil crashing, no play. No play. Canopy, this is actually uh, weed. Uh, also kind of crashing, it but broke through this floor here, so now it's negative, so no play uh, here also. Uranium got a couple good plays here, but also crashing. So yeah, as you can see, everything's crashing. Still, not much of a uh, swing trade opportunity. I think what's gonna happen Monday is uh, uh, we can stop here. What's gonna happen Monday is we're going to uh, wait it out and see which direction the uh, market's gonna go. By the end of Monday, we may have another uh, opportunity for swing trading. But I don't have that many opportunities coming in uh, on Monday morning.